and welcome to another episode of Aloha Authentic with Kamako Pili, Hawaii's only TV show where we focus on our local artisans, our cultural practitioners, and our kupuna with the stories, the mo'olelo, the mana'o, and the meanings behind their work and their practice to share with you in the comfort of your own home. How's that? We're thinking of you. <laughs> but you know, this is a really special episode for me. Because if you've been watching the past few months, we've been focusing a lot on our cultural practitioners and our kupuna and organizations that have given and continue to give so much to our communities, which is awesome. But we want to step back and take it back to our local artisans because our own talent that we have here within our islands is so pristine and awesome that their stories need to get out and need to be heard. So we're going to step back and take it to our own local artisan. Um, born and raised in Hawaii, Don Yoshimura. Aloha, Don. Hi. Mahalo Thank you so for welcome. taking the time to being on our show today. There's so much things that we want to talk about in a conversation. A good message, but of course, we need to follow our own protocol here in Aloha Authentic. So this is the first time you're watching. Take notes, okay? This is a plate of poke. This is a bowl of poi. And the reason why we're going to be eating, we invite you to go eat for yourself, is Tutu always said, when the bowl of poi is open on the dinner table, no negativity is spoken, only words of encouragement, positivity, and creation. Because when you say and speak these negative bad juju words, it gets all stuck into the food, and it sours it, and not a good kind sour. <laughs> and we don't like to eat that, yeah. Only the tutus know the good kind sour, the poi. That's too sour for me too. But there's so much onalicious things that we're going to talk about. So that's the whole meaning of the, the food and the poopoos in front of us. Our next segment that we will get out of the way before our conversation is we're continuing on this Did You Know segment. We've touched upon different la'au or different plants around our islands, and we've also talked about different street names. So we're going to be stepping it up in our technology and putting a little one-minute clip video for you to share about Kalakaua Avenue, which is a very prominent street within Waikiki. I'm pretty sure you've heard of it, so check it out right now. To make your way down into Waikiki, I can guarantee you at one point or another, you're going to head onto this street that's behind me, a very busy one-way street that's named Kalakawa Avenue. Heads from the ever side of Waikiki all the way through the Diamond Head End. Now, who is Kalakawa and why is the street named this name? King David Laamea Kalakawa was Hawaii's last king, Hawaii's last male monarch. His sister, Queen Liliuokalani, had taken the throne after he had passed, all the way up until the American government had overthrown the Hawaiian kingdom. Now, King David Laamea Kalakawa had an estate here in Hawaii, and if you were to make your way down on Kalakawa Avenue heading Diamond Head, you would come across a street named Uluniu. Uluniu literally translates into the coconut grove or the grove of coconut trees. On this estate, King Kalakaua had a two-story wooden structure where he would party. He, he loved to party. He would host a lot of friends, hold a lot of celebrations, but Kalakaua was known to preserve and bring back a lot of the ancient cultural arts. Hence, Kalakaua Avenue here in Waikiki. All right, wasn't that so good? We're going to continue with that kind of little realm of video clips coming out. So continue to watch this show, to listen and learn a little bit more about our street names. But we also invite you to alohaauthentic.org and check out all the other past streets, sacred places, place names that we've touched upon, even Hawaii abroad. So much mana'o on that website, check it out. But we're not going to delay this conversation anymore. Don, you have so much products just in front of us. Um, and a wide variety and to me there's a root where all this comes from but before we get into that just tell us a little bit of who you are and what do you do well thank you for having me Kamoka Mahalo. Um, I'm Dawn and I've, I've been born and raised here I'm a fourth generation Japanese American uh, dad is from Papaiko the Big Island and my mom is from Makawao in Maui and I I've been doing my art full-time since 2014, but I've been painting and drawing my whole life. So coming from Kaneohe, um, the koalaos are very important to me. So I've, I'm always painting, drawing, thinking about them. Um, that's reflected in my paintings. So I do a lot of landscape paintings uh, on site. And my favorite place is Ulamao uh, in Kaneohe. Uh, I think what's really cool about my artwork, though, is I was recently looking at it and I have paintings from Kaneohe Bay before they started restoring the fish pond. Mm -hmm. And so I have it from just, you know, a half circle of, you know, how tree to wow. now having the full circle. And I mean, it's really, I think, beautiful to see. That's awesome. Um, and I also do my ceramics and uh, I do uh, calligraphic abstracts, color bridges. Mm -hmm. The color bridges are important for me that I would like them to spread. Uh, throughout the world because for me they start off as a prayer 
and I try to create a harmonic piece that if you see it when you're going out for the day or when you come back home, it gives you a feeling of peace and hope. Um, it's just something you can have at home that really creates a positive energy. And that's really what my art is all about. And it comes from my love of Hawaii and just the whole beauty that I've grown up with and been thankful to be part of. You know, and, and that's a perfect segue into this part where I kind of want to just have you build a foundation for myself and for our audience as mm -hmm. well of being a fourth generation, born and raised here, call Hawaii your mm -hmm. home because this is all you know of, but mm -hmm. you don't have the koko, you don't have the Hawaiian blood right. quantum. Pa paint us a, you're good at painting pictures, paint <laughs> us a picture of what is was your lifestyle growing up. Uh, well, my lifestyle was, uh, our neighborhood was very mixed, typical Hawaiian, you know, we had Portuguese, Chinese, Japanese, um, we had a lot of the trades, so the work class neighborhood in Kaneohe, and I think that we really, as, even though we're all immigrants aside from the local, you know, Hawaiians that were there, I think we all grew up with that culture, and I think the culture was something that really was deeply embedded in me. And I feel that it really has informed my art. I didn't really realize that until I moved away in 22, 2002, I moved to Sweden. And I met my husband there, so he's Swedish. And it was really before, I think it wasn't until I got to Sweden, I realized how much of Hawaii is in me. And you know, people would say, oh, is that American? Is that Japanese? Uh, where does that value come from? And certainly, I have some of the Japanese values that I come that come from my family, but I really feel that being a fourth generation Japanese American, um, my parents and family always told me to be proud of who I was, where I came from. So I have, I feel, some of that in my art. You know, the indigo color I think comes from the Japanese kind of color aesthetic, but the uh, the love of the land and the landscape I think is really something that has been internalized by being someone who was born and raised in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So For yourself, being, and we'll just look at, at the world today, we have mm -hmm. the renaissance of the renaissance of Hawaiian culture, and you have so much different things. A lot of it is culturally focused. Where do you see yourself within this Hawaii today, mm -hmm. with the role that you play, being a full-time artist, and the stories that you share, and being like a sponge of sucking up all that knowledge and experiences mm -hmm. growing up? Where do you see in, in, um, your kuleana in, in society, in our communities today? That's a good question. I, I, I don't think I've thought about it until you asked me the question, but I feel that um, my kuleana is to really observe and to express what I see in, in, in my surroundings. And when it's Hawaii, it's the, the natural parts of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I, I have a piece here that I call Moakane. It's king of the park because it's a... It's a rooster from Ho'umalahia. Mm -hmm. And I did that piece because um, I heard on the news one evening that they were going to try to get rid of all the chickens. And it sounds strange, but I felt I took it personally. I felt like, oh, but they belong here too. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I ran out to the park and I went there. Sure enough, I found chickens and I, I painted it because I felt that, um, I felt that, you know, even if you're a newcomer, a relative newcomer, because uh, you still can be part of part of Hawaii. And I, one thing I do want to ask you, maybe Kamaka, is we talked about it before the show. Um, I'm not, I don't have the cocoa. I'm not uh, ethnic Hawaiian. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I do feel like, where is my place? Is Hawaii my home? Or mm -hmm. is Japan my home? Mm -hmm. And uh, I always feel whenever I'm uh, away from Hawaii, Hawaii is my home because I don't think I would go back to Japan. <laughs> I wouldn't go to the mainland. Uh, I don't feel that's home. And with the art, um, I have another one here. It's called Mo Better Go Fish mm -hmm. because I have, uh, when my paintings, I, they all have an emotion to them. And the emotion, the connection that I'm trying to capture in my paintings, in this particular one, it's where I used to take my goddaughter, Rachel, to feed the, the fish. Mm -hmm. So it was something that we would do, you know, every weekend. And I've painted that site. Now she's now 21, so I, we can't do that anymore. <laughs> but I, um, I like to paint that to try to recapture that feeling and that emotion, that connection that we have. Mm -hmm. So 
I'm hoping that when people see my art, that they kind of feel that connection as well, maybe a remembrance of some other mm -hmm. memory that they've had with someone, or uh, maybe something that they'd like to experience. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a, to answer, and going back, mm -hmm. um, answer your question, for me, and I, I'll just, I'll stay a statement and I'll answer your question with another question. Mm -hmm. But for me, like, you know, one of the pet peeves that I have um, is when people move to Hawaii, I've been here for one, two years, and boom, they're a local person already. One lady came up to me after doing a yeah. show, and she's like, can you take a picture with me? I'm local. I just got my, my state ID. I'm a local person. And I'm just like, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's just the lack of, I, I guess, understanding and the lack of, for on our end, educating. Because mm. to us, a local person is one who, for me, born and raised here, and you have that connection. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, a lot of people say they're local, but they, they pass that whole opportunity to connect with the land, to mm -hmm. connect with the spirit of Aloha, to mm -hmm. connect with the spirit of the different elements that's around us. Mm -hmm. And no matter what your religion, that religious background, mm -hmm. everything has a spiritual connection. And mm -hmm. for me, that's the difference between a local and a non-local. Um, but for me, asking to you, like what, and I know we kind of touched upon this yeah. previous to the recording, um, an example of somebody who's not from here and disrespect their land. Mm -hmm. If you were to see an example of that, what would that make you do or how would that make you feel? Oh, yeah, I have a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I had visitors coming to, um, visiting from New York. So I took them to one of my favorite spots. It's uh, Kayana Point. And uh, we hiked out there. Uh, we timed it so we could watch the sunset. And um, we're sitting there and I saw some Chinese tourists there, some young ones. And um, just something inside me told me, watch them, you mm -hmm. know. So, so we're sitting there, and my friends are enjoying it. And then uh, they started taking out soda and chips and everything. Mm -hmm. And so they, uh, and then just something inside me also told me to, that they're gonna just trash it. I was just, I just knew in my gut that they mm -hmm. didn't have any respect for where we were. So sure enough, they're eating and just throwing all the opala down, and. I was so angry. I mean, I, I, I can't tell you how angry I got. And, and that's what I mean. I think maybe what you're talking about that, I mean, I'm not blood Hawaiian, but this is Hawaii. This is my home. And Kayana is a very special, sacred place. And they had totally no respect for it. So I went over and I'm like, hey, hey excuse me. You know, and I said, uh, you know, you're going to put that away, right? You're going to put it in your backpack. And they were looking at me like pretending like they didn't understand me or understand my English. So I use sign language. I'm like, you know, put it in your backpack. And then I waited until I saw them put it in. And then, um, and then I thought just something also, again, I was thinking this, these people, like they don't understand and they totally don't respect this place. So I was just so angry. And, um, and then I'm sitting there and I told my friends, you know, let's just wait because I want to see what they're going to do next. So they pull out of their backpacks plastic flags, Chinese flags, mm -hmm. and they put it in the sand. And they put it in the sand. And when they did that, and they started taking pictures, you know, like this, I just got even more angry. I think I was more angry than with the the trash. Mm -hmm. And so when I I was looking, so I really like I I, I just felt this this so much anger that people just don't understand, don't respect the. Hawaii and the land, and, and I think that's something that you don't have to be a blood Hawaiian to feel. I mean, I think that really is, for me, my kuleana is that I know my spot, my home, and that's something that should be taken care of. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, that's something that was really a very strong feeling. And so I made sure that I waited and I, you know, like, did the same thing. I'm like, pointing, I'm like, you know, you're going to take that up, right? And then, um, and they didn't want to. I could tell they didn't want to. But I sat there and I waited. And then they saw me sitting there. And, you know, it was this this kind of tug of war. They're sitting there. Who's I'm gonna sitting move there. First? Who's gonna move yeah, first? and it got it got dark because the sun went down. And we waited. Both of us were waiting each other out. And finally, they picked it up. And I waited till uh, I saw them leave because I really just wanted to make sure that they weren't going to just trash it. And and I think to me, that's one of the strongest, I guess, examples I can give you mm -hmm. of 
how I feel that Hawaii is my home. And I think that people come here and they don't necessarily um, take it that deeply. I think mm -hmm. they just say, uh, they're very proud to say they have a Hawaii driver's license mm -hmm. or you know, Hawaii license plate, but that doesn't mean that they really have yeah. settled yeah. settled in here. I think that's the difference. You know, and, and touch, talking a little bit more because doing mm -hmm. events and doing a lot of things, mm -hmm. um, trying to share about Hawaiian culture, mm -hmm. but including examples like you, people who are from here who have also a story to share through their products, which you obviously do. Mm -hmm. um, but just to put it out there, because this is what I was, I learned and I thought it gave me a lot more respect. And I think a lot of people out there could always have a lot more respect, myself mm -hmm. as well, is that that whole issue of blood quantum for Hawaiians, you know, don't do that because they're not Hawaiian. That wasn't really a conversation piece before the whole creation of Hawaiian Homestead. Because mm -hmm. Hawaiian Homestead was the first thing that put a blood quantum number to how much Hawaiian you have to be to accept to get this. Mm -hmm. But before that, being Hawaiian for me and how I interpret our kupuna is being Hawaiian came from the intent that you had behind everything that you did. Working with Hawaiian families, working with the royalty, working with anything to do with Hawaiian culture, aina, our space, the aloha mm -hmm. spirit, anything. You being Hawaiian really came down to the aloha you really had for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. If your intention was bad, that came through. People seeing that, and then of course, they're, oh, that person has a bad intention. You're not aloha. That's not Hawaiian, mm -hmm. you know. But the whole thing nowadays is like that person's not Hawaiian. Be careful, or da 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 da. And to me, it's like you know, step back because yeah. it comes to the intention. And for you, and you know, I kind of because time is going so so fast because mm -hmm. we always said half an hour goes by real fast. <laughs> but you have so much work that share your stories and for the words that you've already shared emotion um the feelings of people all of that stuff for me proves the intent of what you're trying to do um for our communities uh so let's just go through the different types of work that you do and kind of share mm -hmm. a little bit background the biggest one that's catching my attention are these big pieces yeah. um these paintings for this one that's that's up just give a little bit what what is that let's just start with uh, that. What well is that? it's a painting actually from sweden and I, I, as I said, I travel a lot. My husband is from Sweden. And it's uh, midsummer in Sweden. And that piece was a struggle, but it took me over 20 layers of wow. uh, painting. Uh, but they have a beautiful white sand beach on a particular island there. And uh, what struck me about it was it has its own color, its own light. Um, it's a white sand beach like Kailua, mm -hmm. but it's... Um, I think that you know each place has its own feeling and its own uh, energy, mm -hmm. and so what I took a lot of pleasure with painting this one is that um, people from Sweden or people who have been there, they really feel that they said they can feel the the cool air, they can feel the pressure from the storm coming wow. in from the ocean uh, when they see it, and and that's I, an example of what I'm saying of that. I really mm -hmm. would like my pieces to evoke an emotion and a connection to a particular place. Mm -hmm. um, can I show another piece? Of course, please okay, do. So I'm She's going to get up and create <laughs> some traction on the show. <laughs> but you know, the cool thing, especially about that one that I really do appreciate with, with you, Don, is even the opportunity to go to somebody else's homeland and to capture an, a feeling or to capture an image or to capture the spirit of something and turn around and share it in a positive way with a message. And I think from what I get from your work, that that's kind of a niche that I see from you, and I really do appreciate that. Thank you. So what is this next one? It looks so, pretty cool. Uh, so this next one is painted at Ulamao. It's my hometown, and I, as I said, I've painted it and drawn it my whole life. Um, but this particular day, uh, when I moved back in 2014, I noticed there's so much vog nowadays, and the vog has really changed how Kaneohi looks I mean to me from my childhood memories and I thought at first it was just my memories but when I went back to my old sketchbooks uh, there were different colors so there was a lot more uh, reds yellows um, but with the change in the atmosphere Kaneohe does look a little different now so I painted this it wasn't the most beautiful day but I thought this is still Kaneohe so I'm gonna go out and I painted it on site um, and you can also, as I said, you can kind of see the, the fish pond there. So whenever I'm painting at home, you're, you'll probably 50% of the time you'll see me in Kaneohe painting the, the koalaus. Um, but, but I just wanted to share, you know, one of the pieces here. Um, 
They don't tend to be much larger because I'm painting on site. Uh, but I do do limited edition art prints that are larger. So for people who want a larger piece, they can order that. But my, my process is really about painting on site and really feeling the, awesome. the, the weather there. You know, one thing that just popped in my head, and I think mm. everybody should know this, especially if you're from Wamanalo, Kailua, or Kaneohe. Mm. You know, Kailua is so evolving so fast, mm. in, um, coming from such a small little town to something, it's a small town with just an overwhelming amount of people, that it's, a lot of times it's just a love-hate relationship. Mm. But coming to read that, it is believed that the first settlement of Hawaiians settled and came in through Waimanalo, through Kailua to Kaneohe. And they say Kaneohe Bay, which I can mm -hmm. see in that portrait, was known for its most pristine waters. And it had such a plentiful amount of life. And in our, our the soil mm -hmm. and our land was, to the Hawaiians that I've read, was just the best of the best. Mm -hmm. So it just made me super proud. And, and for <laughs> you to be able to capture that, you know, that's the energy that I feel that you're capturing. And when you say emotions, something like this, that I know mm -hmm. you have a whole much more to share about these little mm -hmm. ceramic urchins but they all capture a type of energy mm -hmm. and I know you mentioned each one has their own voice and I don't know if you can yeah, hear it do. but if you can share a little bit about this can you hear it I don't know <laughs> <laughs> but, so uh, it's something so different from your paintings a yeah. little bit about what are these these creations. are um, they're if you've gone diving uh, you've seen these uh, they're decorator urchins and uh, they're usually purple if you see them in the ocean. But what I love about these guys is that they go along the sand bottom and they pick up stuff. They pick up things, and they put it on top. So after a while, it looks like a haku lay on top of their head. But what's hilarious about them is they pick up stuff and they have no fashion sense. Not mm -hmm. like you, Kamaka, but they, <laughs> they, they, have, um, they pick up rubbish, they pick up coral. I've seen band-aids, I've seen, yeah, everything imaginable. But I do these pieces because they're all individuals. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, and for art, I mean, a painting, you have it on the wall. But these pieces, I really want people to pick up mm -hmm. and hear the sound, feel the piece. And each piece is unique, it's just like everybody. You know, so everyone is unique, and you pick up things along the way. So in my mind, they're not urchins. In my mind, they're little portraits. Mm -hmm. So they all have. They're all unique, they're all different. And I really, like this one has an opihi kind of shell here and some limu, but I, they all have their own unique tone too. So not one has the same sound. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they really are meant to be picked up. So I, I make them so they, they feel good in your hand and that they feel like you want to pick them up. So even just the fact that your intent of it having its own voice, mm -hmm. to me, that's something I learned in Hula of how everything is its own spirit, which mm -hmm. you're kind of touching upon. So to me, then that, that emotion of what you're trying to do. Let me ask you this. What do you expect people to get from your work? What do I expect? <laughs> I, I, f I hope that after they've seen it or picked up one of these, or hopefully even take it home, that, that, they, that they feel joy. I mean, they feel happy. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think that people are so stressed nowadays. Uh, I really think it's important to slow down. Uh, and that's also why I feel that it's important to have art in your home, mm -hmm. handmade things, you know, like your kukuile. I mean, it has to be for me, uh, authentic, authentic, meaning that it's something that a human has made, mm -hmm. that they've really put some thought into it. And when you wear it or you have it in your home or you use a bowl that someone has made, it's so much different than having something made in Ikea mm -hmm. or, you know, mass made. Yeah. And, and to me, that's also the difference that I see with uh, local Hawaiian designers as well. You know, the, the, the local uh, fashions that you see are different than buying it in mass on yeah. Amazon. You know, so, mm -hmm. um, so I think for me, to answer your question, I guess when, when they... When they look at my art or they have it in their home, it's something that they feel is part of their home. And it has a very warm feeling. Awesome. And with two minutes, three minutes that we have, and it went just way <laughs> fast. But in yeah. a one minute answer, mm -hmm. what is aloha to you? Ah, aloha to me is, uh, I tell the kids at Palama, I do, uh, I teach kids there. I tell them that to me, aloha, uh, the kids in Palama are by and large Chukis, so mm -hmm. they're also learning about Hawaii and the culture and the language. So 
uh, I asked them once and they said, oh, aloha is hi and goodbye. Um, to me, it's not even that. To me, it's about respect. It's about respect um, that I see you and I respect and acknowledge you and also that you see me mm -hmm. and that you acknowledge and respect who I am. So I think it's really about, um, maybe not as, a, as a closing, uh, I don't want to end on a negative, but the road, you know, people, how people drive nowadays. Yeah, <laughs> got you on that one. <laughs> Aloha. Aloha to me is really about thinking, maybe that person, you know, is stressed and needs to get to work. I'll just let them go ahead. You know, you don't That's have to get idea. angry. Uh, or maybe uh, I'm in a hurry and thank God that person let me in, you know, mm -hmm. and you're really grateful. Mm -hmm. So to me, aloha is, is that kind of feeling. Awesome. Thank you for that. That's, yeah. that, that's a good way of, of giving a visual to yeah. something so simple. Um, but where can people, if people could, there's even color bridges, mm. a whole thing she has what we call color bridges. We didn't have yeah. any time to talk about, yeah, but sorry. I know it's a really big passion of yours. <laughs> yeah. Where can people find more information about that? Uh, I have a website, uh, Don Yoshimura Studio. So I have uh, examples and I also do workshops as well. But, but I think that you can also go to Brianta Gallery and I'll be at Cedar Street Gallery in the Matchbox uh, show coming up this Christmas. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Donnie. Okay. So much. And I hope everybody out there just built a little <laughs> bit more understanding. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole point of this particular episode was to build that bridge to connect old Hawaii with today Hawaii, kind of at least the mentality. Um, mm -hmm. So I really much appreciate your time okay. here. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We're closing out on our third season. So next month, which will be December, will be the last episode for this year um, and for the third season. Then next year, we're moving on to our fourth season. I'm so stoked. <laughs> so get ready because so much more mana'o, so much more mo'olelo will be coming your way. And if you missed any of our past episodes or a lot of our raw, authentic um, video clips that we're doing on social media, check out alohaauthentic.org. Like our Aloha Authentic on Instagram as well as Kamakapili on Instagram and you'll get so much more of that content right in the comfort of your phone. Until next month, Aloha and Ahui Ho.